Good Tuesday to each and all out there. I just stepped out to see what we have up in the sky today. And <laughs> yeah, the activity has been going on. And just some crazy looking sky today. I'm not going to zoom in on anything. After all, this won't be my content for today. Because, well, as I stated, I'm getting a little tired of recording this type of activity. I have strong feelings and convictions over a lot of what we see today and what has been going on, but I shall not go into that any further. I decided that since I am on my way out as far as this platform is concerned, my time is dwindling on this platform. And I'll go further into why and what my actual content for today will actually consist of. Yes, this will be a lengthy video. I have a lot to share. Stay tuned, won't you please? So basically what I'd like to share today is memories. And it is... <laughs> quite awesome to actually see how your past life dictates your future life and I did not realize how much so that that impact has made over the course of well over a half a century over 50 years I am soon to celebrate which I I actually don't celebrate anymore, but I am coming up on my 56th birthday at the end of this month. And so I thought, well, why not go ahead and share some memories of my past from early on childhood to today, to today and let's just see where those memories have taken me. Okay, so as you may well already realize, yes, I am an animal lover, and sorry for the shadowing, I am in my bedroom, and I have my bedroom light on, so you will see uh, my shadow, the camera shadow, from time to time. But anyways, yeah, 13 striped ground squirrel that I used to have a little interaction with, as well as others, and of course, I love my skunks. I am one of those rarities that, yes, I enjoy the smell of skunk. Can you believe that? Kind of crazy. Um, this right here, this was my first true love. Pocla Nina, Nini for short. She was my first remembered cat um, from the age of a year old um, she joined my life as a kitten and lived to be almost 20 years old uh, wonderful cat wonderful memories I had thoughts of sharing a little bit about my uh, life with the weights and bodybuilding working out and whatnot this was back when I was 13 years old and received my first weight bench and later on in life well <laughs> what a slim line stud muffin this guy was huh yeah well, doesn't even want to show up very good but yeah there. 
At one point in time when I used to like to celebrate the Hallmark holidays, there I am dressed up as Santa Claus. Hoo hoo hoo. Let's go ahead and go way back to the beginning when I was just a young chap, huh? Can you see why people used to think that I was a little Chinese boy? Look at those slanted eyes. <laughs> that right there is a the type of skunk that I once had, known as the hognose skunk. Um, given to me by my youth pastor back when I was a teenager. She had went from owner to owner, and, well, eventually I had to give her up to yet another owner, and she had passed uh, shortly thereafter. But it was a, a very wonderful relationship. And that skunk's name was Feathers, because of the type of tail that they have, which is quite feathered, if you will. Now let's get into the little bit of strangeness of my life. This is a drawing that I made when I was very, very young. And there's a story that goes along with this, which my mom actually wrote down for me because, well, you can see that, <laughs> yeah, I was not to that age yet to where uh, writing was not a specialty. But this is how the story goes, and I want you to, uh, to think about this. And, and, of course, um, basically, it says, The Red Snowman, Morgan's Story. Once upon a time, there was a beautiful rainbow. It stretched so far you couldn't see the ends, and from that rainbow came a beautiful red snow. The children loved to play in the red snow and one day they built a huge snowman he was all red with blue stocking cap on with eyes of coal his nose made of a big black button and his mouth of a string of blue licorice i think that was supposed to be black because i don't know blue licorice but anyways um he was a very sweet snowman he was very special because he could talk he would stand all day and say if I can, if I can, if I can. Now, what did he mean? Did he mean if he could move his stick arms and his legs that he could dance? Did he mean if someone gave him a pipe, he could smoke it? <laughs> no. He was saying, if I can, because he was trying to breathe out lots of frosty air to make more beautiful colored snow for the happy people children to play in now isn't that kind of crazy when you think about it because it starts off speaking about rainbow now remember i don't remember this okay but yes it starts off with the rainbow and what do i record not necessarily rainbows but those different things of the colored spectrum that appears rainbow styled kind of crazy and of course uh precipitation if you will very crazy but yeah once again there's my <laughs> yeah <laughs> and as you may well by now by now no <laughs> um yes i am a lifelong resident to the state of michigan and which Michigan is a fascinating state, the history of, and whatnot. But, as a child, I wanted to learn that much more about where I lived. And, of course, we also, in school, in the early years of school, uh, we were programmed in school to learn certain topics. And, well, here is one of the narratives that, you know, we used to have to learn about, and which, well, history now tells us that this is not factual. But, of course, back in the day, it was factual then. All right. And we also had to learn about the natives that once upon a time lived in this region 
and which um, well I do have a past ancestor uh, that was married into the family and she went by Princess Redfeather and she was also made mention of in a past news article about famous women of the state in which my great great aunt Princess Redfeather she was married to uh, a person by the name of Wild Horse Pete and which neither one of those names are the two people that if you do a, a search on um, they are not the same as what you will come up with in that search. Uh, my great great uncle Wild Horse Pete he was one of the last uh, members to the Wild West show that would take place and which um, past family and members they were uh, heavily involved in those Wild West shows. There we go. Amazing that I still have this. Think uh, you know I thank my mom greatly for holding on to a lot of this stuff from my childhood. Uh, this is something else that we had to learn back in elementary school about the four types of clouds. Okay, four types of clouds. How many clouds do we have today? Hmm, yeah. Did you ever have a childhood crush on a school teacher? Well, I certainly did when I was in third grade. Um, her name was Miss Sue, and her and I, we had a great rapport. And which she gave me this happy face award for my performance in the play Twin Cousins, 1975. Now I will say that in my early years in school, I participated quite a lot in acting. This about crushed me when I was in third grade. Miss Sue got married. And we were to have a party for her at school. Unfortunately, I came down with severe bronchitis, and I was the only child that could not attend. And it broke my heart. But at least I still have these memories. And which here, um, okay, boy, this camera just sucks anymore. Anyways, it says here in this card that she gave me, I liked your picture. How could I forget my Mr. Elf? That was yet another play that I participated in where I was uh, uh, one of Santa's elves. And it was the lead of the play. And which she also continues on. Thank you uh, for the vase. I have it in my kitchen window. But I have no flowers yet. Thank you for coming, Miss Sue. Which, I, like I said, I never got to go. Um, again, 1975. <laughs> which, so many people like to call me Mr. Morgan. Well, that's my first name. But anyways, thank you so much for the lovely flowers. Well, of course, I had to have something to put in the vase, right? <laughs> uh, today, I am wearing a blue and red pants outfit. The flowers will go so nice with my pants and blouse. This has been the nicest corsage I have ever received. Bye for now. Thank you very much, Miss Sue. And there's a little drawing that she put there. Just kind of neat. Yeah, childhood crush, I'm telling you. Since the early days, I've always been an avid reader. Not so much since uh, uh, YouTube came about. <laughs> but, yeah, even though I couldn't even read yet book was in my hands. Of course, one of uh, my favorite holidays that I used to enjoy was Halloween. I love the macabre. I always have and I would participate in our community's pumpkin contest in which I always did the ugliest pumpkins that I could think of. And I've shown this in a past video as well. Uh, but there I am. Ugliest pumpkin. And that's 1980 there. Here's a brochure from my hometown. And this brochure was from many years ago. 
and I will show you a little bit more of this in just a second. Boy, it takes so much for this camera to actually focus in on anything. But anyways, um, I have one of the churches that's been here forever. Uh, the school that I attended, um, and <laughs> this was long before I ever attended that school. And this is an overview of... Uh, a plane thrown from the viewing overhead of a, from a plane, an airplane, and this goes to show just how old this is. Um, there, there we go. Yeah, you see the style of the boat right there. Okay, Gun Lake. Um, that used to be one of my favorite places to go camping and hiking in the woods and whatnot and back when I was a child I won a, a contest where I was able to go up in the sky at one of our local airports for a little bit of an airplane ride something like this kind of cool um, this is a park Brookside Park I used to spend a lot of time here my mother and I would spend a lot of time and way in the back here there was a small pond and when that would freeze over during the winter time my mom and I would put on the ice skates and we'd go down there and skate and this is a river that runs actually just down the road from me uh, the Gun River which originates from Gun Lake and which it says um, ideal for canoeing and widely known for its brown trout fishing Unfortunately, that is no longer the case because of the farming that has taken over here. The pesticides and fertilizers and all that has leached into this into this once river. Um, and basically, it's almost a dead river anymore. Um, I used to canoe down it when I was in Cub Scouts and... And I occasionally, uh, well, not so much anymore, but in the near past, I used to still try to catch fish from this river. Uh, you can catch fish uh, right from the mouth of this river as it's uh, coming from the lake. But it's just a sad state of affairs anymore and very, uh, very pathetic. My love for animals has been lifelong to where I have even interacted with our government and wrote letters to the government for information and which the information was, which I still have this here, which is from the Office of the Interior, um, over Peregrine Falcons. And yeah, Department of the Interior, and this is from 1979, and Fish and Wildlife Service, List of Endangered and Threatened Wildlife and Plants, and which, and this, this, was, this was not anything to do with school, mind you, okay? This was all me, just my interests, back when I was a kid. That's, you know, that's... It's just been my whole life that I, I have been involved in this interest of wildlife, the environment. I actually wanted to become a DNR officer, um, but that never came about. All right, here's the letter that I actually wrote to to them. I live in Otsego, Michigan. I am 12 years old and I am interested in finding out which animals are extinct and which ones are becoming extinct um, and why they are becoming extinct. Would you please send me any free information and pictures you have on this? Thank you sincerely. In which they wrote that and list um, and <laughs> there is the official 
stamp of receipt by them on the back. See, it was really nice that they actually sent me back my letter as well as the information. Kind of neat. And going back to my acting days, here is a play script to where I played Johnny in the story of Johnny Appleseed. I got the lead parts in many. Um, I also played Ebenezer Scrooge. Uh, in, a, in a class production play as well. Mind you, none of these were actually stage plays, but they were classroom plays, and we would actually go from classroom to classroom uh, performing these plays. Yep, kind of neat, kind of neat. When in the early days, we had to write about me. <laughs> okay? And now this is kind of crazy. Um, draw your special thing and back then I had a mini bike and over the years I've had many motorcycles in which I can no longer ride motorcycles but um, and which uh, what would be a good clue for a gunshot smoke and dead people <laughs> yeah kind of crazy um And there again is my little motorcycle drawing. What does the name mean to you? Happy. Okay. Well, and then we have to we had to write down uh, some information about her name and which what is your name backwards? Negram. Okay. Now I'm going to tell you something right now. Negram is my alter ego personality. I am a Gemini. Negrom is the dragon. You don't upset Negrom. You actually want to be friends with this guy here. <laughs> and do you like your name? Oh yeah. Why? Because it's the name of a horse. Now I'm going to also go into, seeing how we're on this topic, I'm going to show you a little bit more about the name Morgan, especially the masculine name in which it, the original name was masculine, all right? So within this book, an encyclopedia of fairies, hobgoblins, brownies, bogies, and other uh, supernatural creatures, we go to the very first account of the name Morgan. Let's see if I can get this to actually focus. If not, I will just read it. Okay, so... There we go. There is a mysterious story about the Morgan, who was supposed to haunt the Lake uh, Glassburn Ukop in the parish of Lang. Uh, you British folks out there, you yeah, <laughs> you could say these much better than me. Langby. It is one of quite a number of lakes which were said to have burst forth from a covered well when the cover had been removed and the well exposed. Rise in Celtic folklore, carefully explores all the various forms in which he received the legend. The one that he finds of special interest is that of the Morgan, which is said to come from the lake and carry away naughty or over-adventurous children. He believes that the Morgan was originally a mermaid of the same breed as the Breton Morgans and connected with Morgan Le Fay. Morgan in Welsh, however, was always a man's name, and Rise suggests that the water spirit became male in this tradition because of the Welsh usage. Now, Morgan basically means uh, of the sea by the water. Okay, now this gets a little crazy here. Okay, so, uh, it's the name of a horse, the Morgan horse. My mother loved Morgan horses. She was just a horse lover altogether. Therefore, that is the origin of my name. But as I found out later on in life, how much that name actually became part of my identity. I loved water. Um, I, I'm still a water baby at heart, even though um, because of my physical issues, well, uh, swimming has, be has become a pastime. 
back when I was in high school, uh, I was in charge of helping a mentally handicapped uh, student. Um, I, I basically taught him how to swim. And before, well, I'll just say at the very beginning, he would not even put his big toe in our high school or middle school uh, swimming pool. And by the time I got done, he was actually not only in the water, but practicing his swimming techniques. My dad was part of the Navy back when I was a child. Uh, he was stationed in Virginia. Uh, when I was three, uh, three months old, my mom and I traveled to Virginia down, uh, we were outside of the base, but we lived down there for a little while before coming back to Michigan. So there again, that connection to water. And of course, uh, this story of the Morgan above that lake, he was a ghost. Believe it or not, right here is my baby book, and it states within my baby book, uh, my mom made sure to, you know, keep track of, of stuff here, in which she actually states somewhere in here that um, the cover to this book <laughs> was chewed up by an animal by the name of Spook. <laughs> All right. Now then, I actually have screenshots uh, from a year or two ago that I, I did a little search on my phone number. And strangely enough, within at that time to where you could see the chatter in regards to your phone number by others, um, my nickname was The Ghost. Now... Since I, the early days, since I have been living here in this apartment complex, because I was a third shift worker, slept during the day and, and whatnot, uh, the residents around here nicknamed me the ghost because they would rarely, rarely see me. And I do enjoy the paranormal, paranormal fields of investigation or ghost hunting, if you will.